Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. I thought this week we'd just have a bit of an update, in general, what's going on, what kind of plans I've got for the future with all the various fish tanks we've got here and talk through them and maybe ask you guys for a little bit of advice or suggestions, that sort of thing. So as always, if this is your first time here, welcome, and if it isn't, hello anyway, but make sure you click that subscribe button and then you won't miss anything that we do in the future. Um, so we'll start with this tank, we've seen this a good few times now. Still struggling a little bit with the algae, but I think it's coming under control. Um, I don't know if you can see, but in that corner over there, we have some spawning discus. The legs, the eggs, the legs? The eggs look mostly infertile to me, but it's the second or third spawn I've seen between those two. So I don't know whether to give them a go in a little breeding tank and see what happens if we get anything out of it. Or just leave them in here for now. Um, in general, this is going to be where the Mabu puffer ends up. Um, or he's going to spend a, at least a good portion of his life before I get to build some kind of pond in the fish room that no one else knows about. Especially not my wife. Um, so he's going to live in here for a while at least. I'm just not entirely sure when to move him in here. Now I've spoken to a good few people that are on puffer groups and puffer forums and things like that and lots of people who have had a fair amount of success keeping them with discus. Um, I didn't know whether I was going to move all the discus out and just have this as the puffer tank but it seems at least worth a try. Um, I just don't know if he's going to be big enough or small enough to see all the cardinal tetras in there as a snack because what I don't want to do is put them in there and then he wipes out a hundred quids worth of cardinals on a very expensive little snack. Um, so we've got that one, we'll move into my office now. So in my office we've got the three tanks over here, we've got this one which has currently just got some bristlenose plecos, the Senegalese Bysher, you can just see there, and the black ghost knife fish. This one's the little puffer palace, it's got the pea puffers in it, and a whole bunch of coolie loaches, which you only really see at night. Um, yeah, but the puffers, they're still really interesting, really cute out and about all the time, really quite interactive. Um, we've got them, the coolie loaches, and a whole bunch of cherry shrimp are in there as well. The cherry shrimp are the kind of ongoing self-sustaining food supply for the puffers and then this tank which is the killifish, the galaxy rasboras or the celestial pearl danios depending on what you want to call them and even more cherry shrimp and loads of snails so the snails are used for the the pea puffers next door this tank is really nice and um, it's one of the better aquascapes or more successful ones i should say really getting overtaken with java moss but we've also got these plants as well which I've got some moss for the wood that sticks outside got some moss just from outside and this thing here has grown but it's kinda it was looking quite good but it kinda collapsed into the water so we'll probably have to cut that back now and then we've got these little plants as well which look quite cool yeah, really happy with this tank loads of nooks and crannies for everything to live in um, I think we might even have had some breeding action with the Celestial Pearl Daniels because I'm sure I've counted, I only ever put in four, I'm sure I've seen six at once, but they move so fast and they're so fleeting, I'm not sure. Um, I know the killifish have spawned as well, but I'm pretty sure everything will be eating everything else, although there is plenty of cover. Um, this plant in particular, this was doing really well, but all of a sudden it seems to be getting stripped back. I did have another one here and the same thing happened there where it was blooming and doing pretty well and then within the space of two or three days something's been chomping on it so I'm not sure what but as you can see it's kind of the the unkempt jungle look I kind of like it so I have had some crazy thoughts about combining these two tanks and maybe having the, the pea puffers in here as well but I know they can be a bit iffy on what they'll happily live with and certainly that fish there does have some nice long nibbling ready fins so I don't know if it'd be too much of a temptation but there's plenty of snails and shrimp and things like that going on in there and then just maybe use this tank as a kind of practice tank for different types of aquascapes and things like that don't know and then this tank over here so currently just the black ghost knife, a few bristle nose and the, the bite shear. 
it's a three foot cube I know it doesn't really look like it from this angle um, and I was thinking about maybe putting the Mabu puffer in there as a stepping stone before he goes into the big tank but I'm also thinking maybe some kind of cichlid or something like that something a bit tougher that can give as good as it gets with the Baisher Baisher is generally peaceful and practically blind it seems um, but I think he'd have anything that was small um, so I want to get something a little bit bigger so I don't know maybe some kind of cichlid whether it's a South American or something like that might be good for that tank because as you can see when the lights are on there's not really that much action unless I'm feeding something so I'd like to have something that happened in here during the day some of the non-fish residents here that's actually two dogs not a two-headed single dog and in the fish room itself let's start on this tank this is my golden white cloud mountain minnow tank um, which you'll see has a new face down here this wasn't me, I didn't buy this fish this was my daughter went to Pets at Home as a, a trip with the beavers I think it was if you're not from the UK this might not mean anything to you but notice this fish getting beat up by all the other fish that was in the tank and decided that it needed to be rescued and my wife was there helping her so she decided she was going to rescue it and they brought it home and now it lives here but in general the tank's doing fine I've not noticed any spawning behaviour although that one over there looks nice and fat um, but yeah the tank's doing well over here we have one of the golden rams unfortunately we lost the male quite a while ago now actually um, but that one just looks to I me, mean, look at the colours on that, it looks excellent doesn't it? Um, so I'm not sure what the plan is long term with this, I mean this one might go and live in the, my discus tank or try and put them in with these guys and see if we get anything moving along this is meant to be a pair but I've not seen any sign of any breeding um, as of yet but nice looking fish, nice looking fish the other one over there but both good eaters, nice and healthy, nice and active down here is the bristle nose pleco tank, this one, this was a planted tank and originally the rainbow tank but at the moment it's just shrimp and bristle nose plecos I kind of forgot there was bristle nose plecos in here until one day I came down and under this uh, pot here there was just a big clutch of eggs down there uh, and then that's obviously turned into a bazillion babies so we've got all kinds in here, we've got lots of albino ones like this we've got lots of regular bristlenose um, quite hard to see on the substrate but hopefully you can see loads of them but we've got loads of them as well as loads of cherry shrimp some nice deep reds in some of them as always available on aquariumadventures.co.uk I'll ship you some of these if you want some of them uh, I'm probably going to have a think about what I do in terms of selling fish online or shrimp because it's really not cost or time effective to ship them in small quantities so I might just ship larger quantities just not sure and I know plenty of people do it with the with fish but you really should be getting a pet shop license or an animal care license if you want to ship fish now so I know like I say I know plenty of people selling them on eBay that will not have that but I'm not sure what to do with them but if you're interested in this I'm particularly looking to swap fish at the moment so if anybody needs a poop ton of bristlenose plecos and wants to swap them for something else I'm thinking Sterby Corridoras or anything really something interesting by all means let me know or if you just want to buy a load and then I can go and buy what I want we can talk about that too so in here really full they're going through um, cucumbers as you can see here, courgettes, uh, wafers, anything I stick in there it gets devoured pretty quickly. I've been trying all kinds of different fruits and vegetables, uh, watermelons, mangoes, tomatoes even. I've not found anything that they won't just get through in a matter of minutes, which is fun to watch actually. And then over here this is what was meant to be the 
the Pleco breeding tank, which for a long time didn't have any action in it whatsoever. Um, it's absolutely full to the brim with snails. Uh, we've got ram's horn snails, like that one there on the glass, and these ones, but down here it's hard to tell because of the gravel, but there's tons of them. Them and Malaysian trumpet snails. They're the other thing that's breeding most proficiently in here, but there is a good amount of baby plecos in here as well. Um, so far, I mean, there are some eggs actually. So they're just about there. They look like they've been kicked out of one of the caves because there is a lot of squabbling that goes on. Um, but there are babies in here. See if I can find one for you. Oops. So right in the centre of the screen there. Again, not the best focusing going on here. But yeah, there's a good amount of babies in here as well, just not quite as many as in the other tank. Um, but there's at least three or four different sizes in both tanks now. Of really quite small babies up to juveniles and everything in between. So, I've got a lot of bristlenose plecos that I need to find homes for, so get in touch if you're interested. Well, and if we have a look up the top rack up here, we've got just guppies and snails in this one. We've got the, the dwarf neon rainbows in here, and I considered putting them in the bigger office tank as well, just for some movement, because I think they're big enough that the, the bacher won't bother them. Uh, or maybe just some proper rainbows, I say proper rainbows, but not dwarf ones. Um, I'm just not quite sure what to do with them. This one is just, again, more guppies, shrimp and snails. And then here, I've just got a few of the baby bristlenoses in there to take care of all the algae and get that cleaned up. And then there's not really anything else in there. Snail farm on this level. Apart from, there's two tanks with bettas in them at the moment. And these are the same bettas that I've had before. I don't know what it is, but I seem to be turning all my bettas blue. That was a completely white tail that betta had when I first got it. Now it's completely blue. It did have a blue body. And then there's another one over here, which when I first picked this one up, it was uh, red. Almost completely red. And now it's completely blue. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Some magical power I seem to have got the turnfish blue. So that's snail farm. Um, there's nothing in that end tank at the moment. That was a kind of project for breeding some brine shrimp up to adults. Um, again, cherry shrimp and guppies. Oh, I think I've moved all the guppies out of this tank. Well, there might be the odd. Yeah, there's the odd two or three still in there. Um, just keeping the filtration ticking over on that one and then this one is where Mr. Mabu is now it doesn't look it there but he's actually put on quite a load um, of weight and size so he's in here at the moment as this was just his quarantine so I could check for things like worms and all that kind of stuff nothing happened i um, not seen any worrying poos or anything like that so I think everything's fine I'm just not sure where to put them yet it's kind of that funny size I put this little decoration in here just to give him something to hide behind because he was getting a little bit um, or he was being a little bit shy out in the open because nothing to hide behind so he seems a lot more comfortable and will come to the front a lot more uh, now that I've given them a little place to hide behind mostly feeding on mussels, shrimp um, or prawns depending where you come from Snails, um, still got some clams, but yeah, the bulk of his diet is mussels still. Um, but yeah, I just I'm not entirely sure where to put them yet. I don't want to put them. Well, I'm worried about putting them straight into the discus tank now because I think he'll just munch on all the cardinal tetras. I think if I get them a little bit bigger, you'll see them as just not worth bothering about. Um, kind of want to put them into the, the tank in the office because then I can see them in with the bancher and the black ghost so 
and I'll see them a lot more often because I spend all my days in there. Or do I just leave them in here and grow them out a little bit? Let me know. What do you think? What do you think? Put it in the comments what you would do. Well, there you go. Just a quick whiz through all my fish tanks, or most of my fish tanks. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you've got any comments, any thoughts, ideas. What would you move around where? What would you consolidate? Uh, and maybe we'll, next video we'll be doing some of those things. At the moment I'm just going to continue with water changes and cleaning and we'll catch you in the next one. As always, if you're interested in this kind of thing in any way, shape or form, share the video, hit the subscribe button, all that kind of good stuff, it all helps. Uh, on the road to 10,000 subscribers and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.